playing classical guitar can be so frustrating, especially if you're not doing this one simple thing. No, I don't mean just turning the guitar around the right way. I mean, there's something you can do at the beginning of your practice that will really set you up for success. And if you don't do it, it'll make you end up missing strings, missing frets, missing notes, missing rhythms. Uh, what is the simple thing? Well, today I'm going to kind of unpack what it is, and I'm also going to invite a special guest, John Caesar, to talk about his approach to it. What is this simple thing? Warming up. But we don't want to do it. We just want to get to the good stuff. We want to play. I understand. But the good stuff, the playing, is going to be so much more fun if we've taken even a few minutes to warm up. So how do we do it? Well, I remember hearing David Russell say that warming up is like starting to play the guitar all over again. Now, that doesn't mean it has to take a long time, like learning to play the guitar does, but what it means is you want to start with very simple exercises. So, for example, P-I-M-A, just making sure you're getting a good tone, good combination of nail and flesh, A-M-I-P, and uh, then maybe in the left hand, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Even those simple exercises are practiced by professionals. I remember hearing Solo Duo from Italy, uh, which is Matteo Mella and Lorenzo Michelli, and they were talking about those simple exercises I just played as part of their warm up and encouraging others to use them as well. Um, you can use scales, slurs, and arpeggios. So for a scale, you could use the Segovia C major, for example. <laughs> You know, for slurs, you could use one, two, two, three, three, four on the sixth string and do pull offs for that. For an arpeggio, you could do the arpeggio from Etude One by Villa Lobos, but for a warm up, you might not do it at full tempo, you might do it very slowly. So today I've invited special guest John Caesar, who has a wonderful YouTube channel of his own, to talk a little bit about how he thinks about warm-up. John? Hey guys, thank you Sean so much for having me on this episode. I'm very excited to talk about some of these things. So let's just go ahead and get started with it. So when you warm up, the way I like to view it would be just getting ready to warm up the same way that an athlete might get ready to warm up for a game. So the big game is your destination. That's gonna be what we would call, think of the piece. But the question is, how do we get there when we're getting in our warm up and in our practice? So the warming up part, I'm sure that Sean talked to you about it already, and that would be doing things such as getting a good tone, maybe doing some simple finger exercises for the left hand and for the right hand. So let's skip over that and let's go to the next part that I like to talk about, and that would be the equivalent of running drills. So when an athlete runs drills in their practice, what they do is they maybe are going over one they just learned. They may be doing one in particular that they know they're going to use that game, or that there's even a very high chance that they're going to use that game. So that way when it happens, it's fresh on their mind and they're ready. So let's start there. So the piece that I'm going to take to look at this is going to be the theme variations on the theme by Mozart by, of course, Fernando Sor. So why I picked this piece is because there's tons of different elements that go into this piece, and I think that's going to be a great place to start for that reason. So some of these things that I'm going to focus on will be slurs, scales, arpeggios, and even just learning how to balance melody with accompaniment in the right hand. So let's start with one of the simpler ones, and that would be scales. So the first thing that I want to look at when it comes to scales is just getting ready to play the scale that you're going to play in the piece. If you guys are familiar with this piece, you know there's that fast scale right at the end. Okay, so now the question is, what can I do to help myself get ready for that scale? So obvious choice would just be to play some scales, but I think we could take it one step further. So one of the things that you could do if you're thinking about how to practice your scale and get yourself ready would be going back and comparing it to running drills the same way an athlete might, right? So when it comes to that, you might want to find a different way to play the scale. This could include changing the rhythm, it could be including changing the finger, it could be even figuring out a way to play the scale a different way. Why this works for me is because if you have more than one way to do something and more than one way to understand something, it makes the way that you want to do that much clearer because you know all the possible options and how to do them. Now another element of this piece would be slurs, right? And the slur passage is very similar to the scale passage, just it's been turned into slurs. Now for this, what I would recommend would be to just take another scale that you already know and see if you can turn it into a little slur passage, right? That way you have other ways to play slurs and you're even messing around with different combinations that you might not have in this piece, getting all the fingers equally ready. Now let's look at the arpeggios because that's the next one that I want to talk about. Thank you. 
the arpeggios, what I would do is maybe figure out a way, just take a simple chord shape and move it up and down the neck. Just getting your fingers ready with your arpeggios, but more so getting the right hand ready in coordination with the fingers. Now, practicing the arpeggio from the piece, just right hand alone is pretty helpful, but if you can, I would highly recommend to include the left hand in there as well. So that way you start to build the synchronization between the hands in the same way they would be in the piece. Now, finally, would be learning how to balance the melody and the accompaniment in the right hand. So for this, I like to take just a simple chord shape and see if I can take the chord, play all the notes, but bring out one note a little bit more than others. How you do this is when you have your fingers landing on the strings getting ready to play, put just a little more weight down into one finger and then let the fingers release into the hand. If you do this, you should hear one note pop up more than others. I'd say do this a few times on each finger just to get the fingers ready. Now, like I mentioned, we're thinking of it like a sport, right? So what comes in between a practice with drills and a game? And that would be a scrimmage, if you guys didn't guess it already. And a scrimmage, in my opinion, is really important. So what is a scrimmage in terms of playing guitar? So to me, a scrimmage would be doing studies, right? We just did some warming up. We got our fingers going. We just went over the basic techniques that we're going to need. But before we want to apply those techniques into a piece, we want to apply them into a study. What's great about a study is instead of making you run the same exercise or drill over and over and over, is a study takes those techniques and applies it to something a little bit longer with maybe a little bit more complexity in the music itself. So when you're getting ready, you want to take a look at studies and really have the studies be the foundation before you move on to playing the piece. So when looking at studies for this piece, you want to find studies that include the same exact things that I was talking about before, such as slurs, arpeggios, scales, and balancing melody in the right hand. So you can find studies by Fernando Sor, by Carcassi, by Giuliani, all these different stuff, finding ones that are appropriate to what you're going to be doing. Because once you do those, you run maybe those studies once or twice, then you're ready for the piece. Anyway, I hope that you guys found this helpful. And if you guys have any questions on any of this, go ahead and feel free to leave it in the comments below, of course. Thanks again, Sean, and I will see you guys in a future video, possibly. John, thanks so much for sharing that approach. I love the idea of the warm up leading to the scrimmage leading to the game. And I think the game playing the piece is gonna be so much more fun if you take even a few minutes to warm up. As I mentioned before, if you haven't seen John Caesar's YouTube channel, check it out. There's a link in the description below. I encourage you to subscribe to his channel. And also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, Smart Classical Guitar, take a moment to gently warm up that subscribe button here as well. Keep warming up and keep making music.